Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and here's some disgustingly overpriced motorcycle gear. First up, the Kyriak and Hornet Electrical Deer Avoidance System. Put simply, I'm paying $150 for a little chrome tube that makes an annoying sound. It's a deer whistle, and deer whistles don't work. Just looking at the box, we can already tell that they're compensating for something. Protect yourself, your family, your vehicle. You can't afford to drive without it. Independently beta testing labs tested. I googled it. Doesn't seem like that lab even exists. But the Hornet works! That's right, it works. No, it doesn't. Is the Hornet a deer whistle? No. The Hornet is a small electrically powered sonic generator which produces a high power directional sonic wave. Oh, so it's a deer whistle then. Use the Hornet on all your vehicles. But what does that mean? Oh, now I get it. Like my minivan and my semi and my motorcycle, that's what all my vehicles mean. Don't let this happen. Oh, that's gross. Oh, that's just uncalled for. Warning, deer accidents are on the rise. <gasps> They're coming for us. Gold medal for this random dude. Proven to reduce the risk of animal vehicle collision by more than 70%. Oh, wait a minute. The fine print says that's just an estimation. So that's great. I always trust companies that estimate their own statistics. At the end of the day, it's common sense. If the deer can hear this stupid whistle, then they've already heard my engine. And the problem is the deer are stupid, they spook easily, and they don't know what to do around a motorcycle, but having a high-pitched noisemaker is not gonna change that. Should we turn it on just for kicks? Oh, f that's annoying. Now, choosing my second piece of overpriced motorcycle gear was all too easy. This is the Adventure Rally Air, and Climb charges $1,700 for it. I mean, at that price for a mesh jacket, it would have to amaze me to avoid being on this list. But it doesn't. This is the perfect example of luxury lunacy. I mean, Climb just threw expensive shit at the Rally Air until it justified the monumental price tag, but they didn't actually stop and think about whether or not it made any sense. Case in point, heavy-duty Kevlar mesh, which costs a fortune and is nearly bulletproof. And then we have Talisman Super Fabric Abrasion Zones, which are basically tiny ceramic plates welded with a laser onto Kevlar-infused Cordura. Again, it's nearly bulletproof, but it's extremely expensive and extremely heavy. And then we have D3O back and body armor, CE Level 2 certified, complete with the chest protector, which you'll rarely find this side of MotoGP. And what do we have now that we've spent our $2,000? A mesh jacket that weighs a freaking ton. So I need this kidney belt here to make the weight manageable. And between this, the chest armor, and all that talisman super fabric, the thing doesn't ventilate very well. I mean, the Kevlar mesh can let in as much air as it wants. It doesn't change the fact that half my body's surface area underneath is tightly wrapped up. It's absolutely hopeless. I mean, I tried to take the thing out for an afternoon ride in Montreal, and it totally sucked. I mean, first I got super hot and sweaty underneath the chest armor and the kidney belt, so then I undid the kidney belt to try to flow more air, but of course that unleashes all 5,000 pounds of this jacket onto my back and shoulders. I can't even imagine how heavy it would have felt if I'd filled up the hydration bladder. And in the end, I just gave up on it. I swapped this thing for a $130 field shear, which cost a 13th of the price, weighed half as much, and flowed twice the amount of air. Climb? This is stupid. And you set out to make the most expensive mesh motorcycle jacket in the world, and you totally forgot what makes a mesh jacket useful in the first place. Ventilation. Now, my third overpriced piece of motorcycle gear is this. It's the Icon D3O Comfort Insole. I already went into this rant when Icon started putting D3O armor into the knuckles of their gloves, but I'm gonna mention it again here. Viscoelastic armor is not good at everything. Yes, D3O does make exceptional knee, hip, and back armor. It's soft and pliable against the body, it turns rigid in a crash. That's great, but I'm gonna see those benefits when I hit the pavement at 60 kilometers an hour. Walking the aisles of a grocery store? Not so much. I won't say that these insoles suck, because that's not strictly true. I mean, they are comfortable enough, and they last longer than the drugstore variety, I just don't see the point of the D3O though. I mean, whether I'm walking, running, or jumping, I never really notice that viscoelastic stiffening effect. Maybe I just don't care. Either way, this just seems like an excuse for Icon to make a $40 insole and brag about their special relationship with D3O. Skip it, spend 10 bucks on Dr. Scholl's, you'll be just as happy. And finally, the Bell Bullet. Oh, he's not gonna say something bad about the beautiful Bell Bullet, is he? Hell yes I am. The problem with this $500 piece of crap is that it wasn't actually designed by Bell. And what happened was a university student named Chad Hodge drew this up as his thesis, and then he put a picture of it online so that all the hipsters could salivate over the desperately trendy design. Once it looked like enough people would buy it, Bell stepped in and actually made the thing. So what do you get when someone with next to no experience in helmet construction designs a bucket purely based on aesthetics? You get a face shield that doesn't seal so it's loud in traffic and wet in the rain. You get permanently open vents that whistle like a tea kettle above 80 kilometers an hour. 
You get the aerodynamics of a beach ball, which aren't very good by the way. And you get a jawbreaker of a chin bar, which sits so close to my face that it's basically a safety hazard. Plus, a lot of riders have noticed that the face shield and the shell scratch each other just by opening and closing. Now, I haven't actually seen that yet with this bubble version, but if it is true, that's gonna be the most glaring design flaw I've ever heard of. What's something good I can say about this helmet? Um, it's pretty light. Uh, it tipped my scale at 1,470 grams. I like that. It's pretty slim as well, though that does make the amount of wind it catches even more inexcusable. Um, what else? Uh, the eye port. The eye port is absolutely massive, good field of view, I like that. Oh, and it comes with a brown interior, and that alone is going to be worth 500 bucks to some people. Not to me. And that's it for my most overpriced motorcycle gear. Thanks for watching.